Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me for I'm from 93 with Tammy. I am reading. Hold on while I get my Kindle ready to go. Okay, no bad parts. See, you can't really see it. It's a great book by Richard Schwartz, PhD. And it's about the internal family systems model of therapy. And I think it's a really powerful book. And if you're interested in picking it up, know that I was not able to do the exercises without my therapist because I found them to be really deep and intense. And I just want to say that to people. It's cool that it's there and available, but also if it's too much for you, you're not alone. So what are you reading, Tammy? Um, I just finished Yellow Face by RF Kuang. Really yes. interesting read, um, especially from a writer's perspective. Lots of things about publishing and um, you know, how much revising makes it your own story and just mm -hmm. lots of ethical questions. And it's, it would be a really great um, book club book or just a group of writers getting together to talk about mm -hmm. it. I think it's going to be really interesting. And I actually think that Roxane Gay um, on her Substack Audacity is mm -hmm. going to be doing a book club for June with it. So I may have cool. to check that out. Yeah. So there is a book club. You can talk to about it. If you there, is. Yes. there is. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, also, so we had a little technical difficulties because what would life be without some? So we've already talked to how about how we met and Tammy just reached out to me cold, right? To say you like the prompt. I did. Yeah. I've used it several times. Um, I taught for 26 years. Today's actually the anniversary of me stopping teaching. That's which amazing. I'm very excited about. It is. Right. Um, and, um, and yeah, I love this poem. It has a very special um, place in my heart. It took me a little while to kind of get into it. Usually prompts, I'm, I'm, I went mm -hmm. for it, but um, it took it took me about three times to teach it, and I had a group of sixth graders in uh, Gary, Indiana, that sort of opened mm -hmm. it up for me. So, so yeah, I've written it several times. So, and I'm excited about this latest version that I yes, wrote for you. So for you, you wrote a new one for this. I did. You didn't, I did. Sometimes I wrote a brand new one. Just used what they already have, which is totally fine. Um, well, I'm excited to hear it. And the reason we had technical difficulties before was because we had a great conversation and then Tammy started reading her poem and then I couldn't hear her. So <laughs> I was frustrated by this development and I stopped her, which I really never do. But I was like, I, I want to hear this because I've read it and I want to hear you read it. So I'm yes. excited to hear it for real this time. All right. Are we ready? Yes. Okay. Where I'm from by Tammy Evans. I'm from the seven-foot table where roasts, boiled potatoes, and green stuff were served on Sundays. I'm from a town I don't claim, even though it appears on my timeline twice. I'm from eight o'clock coffee beans ground in the grocery store and canned Pillsbury biscuits fried into donuts on the electric stove. I'm from two households, not from divorce. I'm from summer birthday pool parties on a dead-end street that no one came to because they were always on vacation. I'm from a home next to my elementary school with the best playground equipment. I'm from summer nights filled with fireflies. I'm from swimming in the pool fresh from the hose filling it up. I'm from winter nights reading in front of the fire. I'm from games I could play independently. I'm from a booth in the kitchen that didn't hide the ugly wallpaper or my strows filled father asleep after day turns at the mill. I'm from Bisquick pancakes, spaghetti made with a packet, cornbread from a box, and stew made in an electric skillet. I'm from all-day coffee. I'm from the kitchen closing with dishwashing before the 10 o'clock news. I'm from the evergreen tree that only seemed to grow in photos that hid Easter eggs and bird nests. I'm from, it's your responsibility, and you don't need a man. I'm from Ritter Sport chocolate with hazelnuts set from the fatherland that melted like sun on my tongue. I'm from teenage marriage between parents who met at a skating rink who are still married. I'm from looking at the clock every day at 1234, no matter the time zone. I'm from trips to the library and books, books, and books. I'm from Christmas Eve at six o'clock with the bells from the church record and Santa. I am not from Southern Illinois like George. I'm not from the Ivy League. I'm not from Germany like Ingeborg and Stella. I'm not from the MFA. I'm from all my experiences in reading, but not a certain place. I'm from the staff survey filled with lies as a joke. I changed my middle name to what I think I should be named. I said that I claimed no one in my family. I said my hobbies included rutabaga and beet farming. 
I said, I ran with an Olympian, which is the only truth in this game of three truths and a lie. I played the other way around. I'm from a family filled with love and high expectations and not always in that order. Yay, how did it feel? It felt really good to read it. Like at first I thought I was watching some of your old ones mm -hmm. and I was afraid that I would get caught, like choked up, but yeah. I feel, I feel good it. about it. So <laughs> yes, I did it without choking up. <laughs> choking up is obviously allowed as well, but I know yeah. that lots of times yes. people don't want it. So I, I love Ritter Sport chocolate. That's, that's my biggest takeaway. No, that's <laughs> when I read it, I was like, oh, that's so good. Um, yes. So what are the two households that was the? So when I was growing up, I actually spent most of the time with my German grandmother, who I called Oma, mm -hmm. which is the German word for grandmother. And that's where the Ritter sport came from, because mm -hmm. um, my Oma actually came from um, the east side of Germany when there were still east and west and she escaped. And that was the whole thing. But from the time I was two and a half until I was in eighth grade, I spent every weekend and vacation with my grandparents. And so, you know, when I went to school, I had to go back to my parents' house, which I was not happy about because I thought I was going to, you know, stay there. So I, I have this conflict and, you know, juxtaposition of these two very different households that I grew up in, but, um, I'm very much the person that I am because of the time that I spent with my Oma and most of the things in the story or in the, in the story, in the poem are, are from those, those memories. So those are the two houses. So not from divorce, just. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because the, ring, the roller rink couple is still together. Yes. My parents are still together, still alive. Yep. Which is amazing. I, I mean, yeah. as a, a child of divorce and my husband's a child of divorce, we're always like, Oh, and, and really everyone in my family is divorced. So mm -hmm. like it was, they were like, no, this is miserable. <laughs> I'm out. Um, yeah. Which is which good for them. Um, and then I was fascinated by the list of what you're not. So how did you get there? how did you make that choice? So I have this, I mean, it, it, from the beginning, like I always, I was born in a town here in Northwest Indiana that I don't claim, like, I don't feel like I'm from there. Mm -hmm. I mean, the line where I write, you know, I feel like I'm from all the experiences and I don't like to be pigeonholed into a, into a town, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting, um, because I love this poem but I fundamentally don't like this question as like a, you know, oh, where are you from? You know, kind of question. <laughs> I get that. That's funny. That's I mean, I hadn't thought I, of it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the part I love about this poem. There's so many interesting, mm -hmm. you know, um, things. So, um, so yeah, did you ask me about the, about the food list? Well, I asked you, no, I asked you how you got no. to them, what you're not, but I, that's fine. I love oh, that answer from, because yes. I also have always found, I, even though I've only lived really in two places when I was 18, which is when you go to college and people ask you where you're from, I feel like that's when you really get that question hard when you leave home, you know, it's like, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Blah, blah, blah. And I felt conflicted because I did really feel like, oh, I'm from Southern California, but I'm also from Boulder and these two places inform who I am. And, and so many people had such neat, tidy stories. And I never yes. felt like I had a neat, tidy story. And so You've yeah. just given me a piece of insight of why I love this prompt so much because I finally feel like there's an answer to where I'm from and it's a poem. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, it's Deal interesting because it. I'm, yeah, I'm not from Southern Illinois <laughs> like my grandfather. My Opa grew up in Southern Illinois and it's funny because um, when my Oma died, his his um, cousin came up and um, my uncle Cooney is what they called him, which is funny in its own way. But my Opa went into the Southern drawl that I've never heard him do mm -hmm. before, you know, but that's part of where I'm from too, of all these ancestors and the people that are close to me. Um, I didn't go to the Ivy League. I went to a state school, proud that I went to Ball State, but, and my mother and my Oma were actually both born in Germany. My mother was born in Germany and came over here at two and a half. So I'm not from Germany and you know, the MFA, I'm a full-time writer, but I don't have an MFA. So, um, but There's those are things of that. My MFA is not in writing. It's in film and television production. So I sort mm -hmm. of like many things in my life. I do something, but not like everybody else. So I do have yes. an MFA, but I, they're not necessary and they're so expensive. Yes, they are. So, so right now I'm in the do it yourself MFA where I'm studying with the people yeah. that I love, like, you know, Pam yeah. Houston and Ramona Osabel and, you know, people like that. So, yeah. 
so that's where that came from well I just thought it was interesting because I do think I felt I that resonates with me feeling like the things you're not and and feeling like wanting to tell people like I did you know well, my parents aren't married. Well, you know, I'm from a blended family. We didn't even have that word back then. People just thought it was weird. <laughs> Everything was just weird. Um, we didn't have all of these words, which are so hopeful. It's nice to be able to name things. Um, so yeah, any other, so how many times have you written this poem, do you think? Oh my gosh. Probably at least 10 times with different versions. And then I've like done bits and pieces and then melded them together and then cut them out. And um, I did rewrite this earlier in the week and then um, I revised it, but I really, and I took the the not part out and then I put Mm. it back in because I do think that with writing and with everything, there's, there's so much unsaid. I mean, there's what's said and then there's not, there's what's not said. And I think that especially because poetry comes from an emotional place, there's so much subtext of what these events bring up for me and then what they remind other people of like just like you said the Ritter sport you know I mean we used to get that way before it was even available in the U.S. because our relatives from Germany would bring it over um so yeah so there's those memories and there were things that came up in this version that I hadn't thought about in a really long time so that's what I was really about it and and if you do read this no bad parts I have to say it is like such a you connect with these pieces of your your parts. That's what it's about. Like these parts that you've cast off for usually for trauma reasons. And, and then you reconnect with them. And as I have, it's like the memories is very much like this poem. It's kind of, it's a uh, continues, even though I've now many times reconnected with my younger selves, it is still astonishing to me how much I remember or mm-hmm. know. I don't even feel like it's remembering at some level. It's just knowing like, this is me. And, um, I appreciate this prompt for that reason. And I, and I love just being a witness to other people rediscovering themselves or reclaiming themselves. This has become my, my theme reclaiming ourselves because, because I feel like we let so much of it go as we, as we grow up. We do. And why? I feel like we're all these sets of nesting dolls. We have all of these identities inside Mm -hmm. and then, um, you know, they're packed away and you forget about them until something brings one to the service surface. And I mean, just like in the, in the story 11 by Sandra Cisneros, it's like, you can feel like you're, you know, we, we can be 49 and feel like we're 11 or feel like we're two or feel like, you know, we're 21 again. I mean, there's all kinds of, of ways that these, that these memories. And I think this poem is so rooted in objects as well. And I think that that was what I struggled with at the very beginning. Like what objects do I really want to represent who I am at the moment that I'm writing this poem? Because Mm -hmm. what, what it looks like today is going to look different than it will a week from now or, you know, five years ago. So it's really interesting. It's fascinating how this one tiny form can bring up so much. Yes. And I love how it makes people or it encourages people who don't think of themselves as poets to write a poem. Because I think there, for a lot of people, including myself, there's a lot of shame around like not being an adequate poet in school. And I think for a lot of people, it's helped them like, oh, I can write a poem and it's available to everyone. Like all these forms are available to everyone. Uh, Absolutely. And anything that's gatekeeping, I'm I'm, I'm more and more just like, no. (laughs) Yes. Not interested. (laughs) It doesn't serve anyone. So, so I hope that anybody that watches this video or any of the other, you know, 92 videos before this, (laughs) even if they don't reach out or even if they don't share it, just Mm -hmm. like to write it for themselves, I think would be just a really Mm -hmm. interesting exercise in self-reflection. See what comes up. And like giving your, your story that much space, like just kind of sitting down with your own story and because we all have a story and I've always felt that well I've felt that way from a pretty early age and this has been validating like everyone has we're all fascinating I, I really think we, that I think so too yeah well any other thoughts Tammy before we close thank you so much for reaching out I I just appreciate like it's hard to do that it's hard to reach out to a stranger and just and but it it's is. it's so meaningful to to the stranger 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> it was that brave moment. Well, because I know that like when I share something on social media or in my, you know, sub stack or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, when people react to that, like then you feel seen yeah. and you feel yeah. that it made a difference. Um, yeah. And the last thing I do want to say is that, um, you know, like I did really fill out the staff survey with all the lies as the joke. Um, and I really have run with an Olympian. I ran with, um, with, uh, Goucher, um, who oh, was yeah. an Olympic Olympic runner in the dunes a long time ago, but, but yeah, I mean, it's just, so the was the staff survey farming. you about yourself or was it you about a teacher? No, it was, so um, I was working in a middle school and the social committee put out this survey and mm -hmm. I was not in the mood to be sharing of myself that day. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm just going to make up all these answers. And then they thought it was hilarious and they like published it in the principal's newsletter, like at the bottom, <laughs> like, like my answers were real. The rutabaga and beet farming is the one that like really cracked me up. I don't even know if you can grow rutabaga and, beet, and beets in, in Indiana, but, but yeah. Well, so. maybe according to the office. I think because we have just been rewatching The Office and Dwight Schrute has a beet farm and it's in Pennsylvania, which is not so far. So oh, I would, yeah, interesting. You know, I would <laughs> I don't know. I've never known a person to grow rutabagas much. Me either. Me either. That's, that's not that's an that is an <laughs> underappreciated root vegetable, in my opinion. They're delicious. It is. It is. <laughs> they make a good stew. If you just yes. throw them in with other things, they're they're really quite tasty. So here we are. are. The rutabaga are. appreciation. Yes. I'm, that's going to be one of the hashtags. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like fewer than 100 posts if you do that. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's where I um, get the word out. Yeah. <laughs> that's your cause. So um, <laughs> thank you, Tammy, for reaching out, for joining me today. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Me too. Thank you to everyone right. for joining Bye. us. Bye.